Hello, my name is Frankie Lollia. I'm a content creator, streamer, and lover of all things Final Fantasy. And today, I will be your host for this roundtable discussing the latest installment in the Final Fantasy series, Final Fantasy 16. The roundtable is for fans, returning people who are coming back to the series, and most importantly, people wanting to start with Final Fantasy 16. All the people here with me are those exact people. So I would like to go around and everyone just introduce yourself and say about your experience or no experience with Final Fantasy. Well, my name is Brooke. I am a streamer and content creator, and I have zero, what's the word I'm looking for? Experience. Experience <laughs> would be the one. <laughs> zero experience with any Final Fantasy. So this is the first time that I've even seen gameplay, got my hands on it. And it's safe to say that I am now obsessed. So <laughs> I love it already. Hey, I'm Will Neff. Uh, I am also a streamer and a writer. And I was someone who, during my early teens and 20s, uh, loved Final Fantasy. Uh, huge fan. Then life got in the way, and I kind of took a break uh, from the series. But now I'm back, and Final Fantasy 16 was a hell of a way mm -hmm. to rediscover something that was a huge part of my life. Hi, my name's uh, Ben Starr, and I am the, the actor who plays Clive Rossfield in Final Fantasy 16. And I have made no mystery of the fact that I am a longtime Final Fantasy fan. <laughs> um, I love the series, so it's been a very surreal honor to uh, get to be a part of something that I love so dearly in this way. I'm Kenny Omega, I am a professional wrestler, and I've played a lot of Final Fantasy throughout my life. And um, hopefully, Final Fantasy 16 will be no exception. Looking very forward to it. So I'm excited to talk to you all about 16, but I want to first know your initial impressions just from watching the trailers of the game. So what did you think at first from just seeing the trailers? I have always, you know, even in the past, seen Final Fantasy and always thought, oh, God, it's so beautiful. You know, like the graphics and everything was always so pleasing to look at. And so to see the trailer, and just, I mean, all the battles, all the combat, it was really, really, for me, intense. I was like, oh, wow, like, I'm going to be in combat. <laughs> like, I'm ready to go. But the colors are so beautiful. I mean, for me, who knows nothing, I'm like, mm. pretty colors. <laughs> like, I'm in. So for me, I was really excited to experience it. Mm -hmm. and so For sure. Gorgeous. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> for me, what stood out in the trailers and what really stands out to me the most is when I was younger, the summons... Now icons mm. were like the garnish on top, right? When you had Knights of the Round come down and drop everything, that, that <laughs> did something to me spiritually. <laughs> so for the icons to take center stage in this game is something I am so excited about. And to get to control one directly feels like a promise that was made to me when I was in my teens, now delivered on in my 30s, mm -hmm. and I'm, I can't wait to experience that. Yeah, that's a wonderful way of putting yeah. it. Yeah. And how do you guys feel from having experience oh. with Final Fantasy and then for the 16 trailers to drop? Wow, so we get the double team and answer. Can you tell me how good I am? <laughs> Can tell me how good I am? So there's this bloke, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Real handsome individual. Oh God, what else do you like about me? <laughs> just, yeah, I like the accent. Yeah. Just, yeah. Yep, the, the five o'clock shadow. Oh my, wow. The pearly whites. Yeah, this yeah, is so nice. I, yeah, the haircut, the quaff is great. <laughs> no, but if I'm to be serious, though, um, much like much like you guys, when you, when a trailer first releases, you just kind of you sit back and you watch it, you take it all in, and the one thing that struck me that was different from ev every other trailer that had released up to this point for next gen consoles was that this is an example of what next gen really looks like, mm. like the lush worlds, the summons or the icons, the characters. Um, top tier voice acting, yourself included. Thank you. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> I believed in the performances. I believed in the characters. When these, when these um, icons are interacting and fighting with one another, you feel the impact. And the fact that you get to control them yourself now too, it's not watching a cutscene. This is all happening at your fingertips. Yeah. So I could tell right away, these guys are going for gold. These guys aren't just mailing again. This is a real Final Fantasy that they are pushing to the fans of the old series, but also for people that may hop into their very first Final Fantasy for the PS5. And from what you've said, it's obviously that the expectations, there was a lot of hype, there was a lot of hype. A lot, yep. Did it meet the expectations when you got to have that hands-on? So for me, as someone who has never played a Final Fantasy game ever, and you know, going into this, I wasn't expecting to be so invested into this world. I mean. 
I cried. <laughs> I, I, I felt for these characters that I you know, know nothing about, anything like that, and I wasn't expecting to feel so connected to the storyline. So not only that, I went home, I told you guys earlier, I went home mm. that night and researched for like five hours on previous games and, and the world and all about it. And so I can tell that I already have this love building for this game that I went in knowing nothing about it. So mm -hmm. I think it's really special. Yeah. And you? Well, I think Kenny said it best when this feels like a next gen title mm -hmm. from the moment you start experiencing it. And for me, a lot of Final Fantasy and my love for Final Fantasy has been filling in the space between the polygons, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> the, the games that I experienced were, were very based and almost like reading a book. I had to create a lot of the lore and the wonder. And when I got my hands on this, be between the haptics and the graphics and, and the way that it unfolds, it just felt like I was so immersed and I didn't have to do any of the building in my head mm -hmm. because it was right there for me. And it's so cool to experience all the magic and the lore and the wonder that I've experienced with previous uh, Final Fantasy titles, but just fully delivered on and mm. realized on the PlayStation 5. So for you, mm. has it met your expectations from having the hands-on? I mean, watching the trailers, playing the little bit of gameplay that I've had my hands on, you expect as a gamer, especially one that's played every single Final Fantasy, they're always at the top of the class. They're always the ones pushing hardware to the limits. This is really no exception. I said it before last time, this really feels like a next gen game. And it's, it's crazy now that we've gotten to a point where things look really photorealistic. So you had said earlier, it's like you don't have to put the pieces together anymore. There's no imagination to fill those gaps. Mm. Now it's just accepting the art design and allowing yourself to be taken by this world and live in it. Yeah. As yeah. crazy and as scary as that might sound, but it's a beautiful world. There can be times of desolation. There can be times of the lushest of lush greens and the beauty of um, wildlife all around you, um, like the chocobos, mm. the, the moogles, uh, your doggy friend, you know yeah. what I mean? Like <laughs> to see him grow as a puppy to then be your, your loyal sidekick that helps yeah. you fight your battles. I'm really looking forward to this tale of a boy becoming a man and yeah. everything that happens in between. Mm. And... Um, just being able to, to wreck some stuff as I got <laughs> it, you know? Yeah, yeah. I think it's really interesting that you say that, right? Because you've listed all these like really iconic things in the Final Fantasy universe, you know, yeah. Chocobos and Moogles and stuff. But I really think, like me playing it, like having <laughs> worked on it for so long and mm -hmm. playing it, what really surprised me was just, you won't expect it, it's completely new. You can completely come in as a new person and play it. Like, if you don't know what Moogles are, that's fine, we'll tell you. Absolutely. You it doesn't mm -hmm. rely on you knowing all this prior knowledge. Nope. It is a singular story that introduces people to this world in a very, very clear way. Yes, it's big and broad, but like, no, we are coming in, like you said, boy to man, what happens in this lifelong story and how he interacts with these mm. people that you've never met before, but you're going to learn to love like mm. almost yeah. instantly. And I think that's a really cool power. Yeah. Which is also why starting at 16 is completely fine. Yeah. You don't have to have started at one or two or three or four, any of those titles. These things, like you said, that have been staples in the franchise, like a Moogle, like a Chocobo. Yeah. They're just cute animals. They help you out. <laughs> yeah. you know I mean, it's you don't have to have known what they're all about beforehand. Just know that they are in this world, yeah. and there's a story to be told. And I think people are gonna like it. So it's really interesting that we bring up Clive's journey yeah. because we've experienced it through what we've played and the different stages of his life. But this man has literally lived it and yes. voiced it. And I think it'd be so interesting to hear the considerations and what you had to really think about for your performance through and to show his growth. Do you know what it was? Is like obviously being a huge fan of this franchise mm. and like knowing how important each protagonist has been for me. Mm. Specifically like Final Fantasy VIII is the first one I played and it changed my life. And I just it introduced this incredible world to me and I just thought going in, right, what if this is the first time someone has played these games? They don't know right. what's going mm -hmm. on. You're going to meet this guy, and they're going to, I'm going to have to basically be the steward of this, of this person to kind of have that same experience. And so the first thing we went in with is, like, how do you make him as human as possible? Yes, he's a hero. Yes, he has all of these amazing powers. He can do all this incredible stuff. But at the end of the day, it's a human story. And if you don't believe it, you're not going to buy it. And I think that's the magic of this, right? It, it's a huge, huge scale. But at the end of the day, it's just a man <laughs> struggling with his own identity, with his own sense of self, which is incredibly relatable. I think a lot of the devs have spoken about how 
this is uh, about Final Fantasy grown up, mm. you know? This is what it is. Yeah. And so we're not just, you know, it's not M-rated just because it's hack and slash and we're seeing blood and violence. We're dealing with really, really adult themes and we're dealing with them head on, right? You see them straight early on. And so to get to play him from when he's 15 all the way through to when he's in his 30s, mm. you see that growth, but also it's not, he's not some kind of like moody edge lord. You get to play his trauma. So yeah. we're, we're there with him. Yeah. And that was like the most important part to get to play that so we can all experience and understand him better. Yeah, I truly did feel when, when I played through the different sections of Clive's life that we got to play, it truly felt like I was understanding more of him and more of myself in a yeah. way from playing these. And I think Final Fantasy is amazing in that sense where you do take a lot from these games for yourself. Yeah. And I can imagine playing Clive, you've definitely done that. Yeah, it's like he, he is obviously a fictional character, but I just, you intrinsically bring so much of yourself to it yeah. because it was four years that we were recording and yeah. so much stuff happened to over that time. Like we had, we had a pandemic, we had all of this, mm -hmm. we literally changed as people. Yeah. And so like it's, you, you just, br you can't not bring that stuff to it. And because mm. of the way that we recorded it, it was, we had the freedom to do that. And the devs kind of let us do that, yeah. which was really, really nice. Definitely. And as the time went on, I got to understand him a lot more, you know? Mm. And yeah, it was, it was just like, bring yourself to it, see what happens. And hopefully people, you know, get, a, you know, get hooked on it the way that I got hooked on Final Fantasy VIII when I was, yeah. when I was 11 years old. Because yeah. <laughs> we, we follow Clive's journey, yeah. but through his journey, we meet a lot of other very interesting characters. I'd just like to throw it out there to see what characters you're most interested in that you have met. Benedicta. Oh, yes. We're gonna, <laughs> Benedicta, we're just gonna yes. nip that yes. in the bud. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I like Benedicta a lot. <laughs> but you I think still, everyone does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We all She's like tough. Benedicta. <laughs> She's like a shield maiden. She's a badass. I like yeah. her a lot. I gotta go with Sid. Sid, yeah. I gotta yes. go with our boy Sid. Sid yeah. the doggy, you know what I mean? There's always those tense moments where you think maybe just to get a, a cheap rise out of the fan. Mm -hmm. They're mm -hmm. going to do something dastardly to the dog. And I just <laughs> clench my fist and go, don't you dare. <laughs> don't you dare. Don't take it to that I think place. Yeah. Everyone has thought that. I know. Mm -hmm. everyone everyone all I've had is people ask me what happens to the dog. <laughs> That's all, like, <laughs> literally the first thing yeah. fans ask about it is like, do you do you kill the dog? And they've got like, a, I don't <laughs> kill the dog. I don't do anything. And they've got a gosh darn right to ask that question. But <laughs> yeah. I want to know for myself how we develop as humans, how we evolve as humans, mm. and how storytelling itself has evolved over the years. I mean, yeah. we used to have books, you know what I mean, to, to, to write our stories and, and to teach things unto people. And now, slowly but surely, we've sort of honed the way to use video games yeah. as a storytelling device. And now we've gotten to the point where Final Fantasy 16, we are at the peak of being able to tell the stories that we want to tell, to have people connect to the stories we want to tell, mm. to feel like not only are you in control of the main character? But heck, you you are the main character. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And um, that's why I think there's been a recent boom in video games. You really mm. feel more attached as a human being and as a person to these stories or to the game. Or if it's a shooting game, you you, you know, you feel like you want to get better at shooting. If it's a fighting game, you feel like you want to get better as a fighter. There's a sense of competition. In this case, there's a sense of a finding of oneself, a, mm. a journey to, to get to that end goal, whatever it may be. I don't know yet in what Final Fantasy mm. 16 is, but my guess is that when you go through this certain trauma, childhood trauma or whatever it is, and you see this sense of evil, you're going to want to extinguish it and you're going to want a happy ending for your main character. Yeah. And I think that when it comes to Square Enix and Final Fantasy series itself, they're the S-class in that. Mm. So I'm looking forward to what probably will be Hope I'm not saying too much, but probably a game <laughs> of the year, or at least a contender. Yep. Yes. Yeah. And I kind of want to move the discussion in the more different direction of what the game's doing. So yeah. uh, we'd mentioned before, like Will mentioned before, like the game is, we have summons in Final Fantasy. In this game, we have the icons. And right. the icons are so much more of a central focus in the game. They are such a huge focal point in the game, the characters change into these beings. And for someone that's very new to the series, <laughs> you're giggling in the corner. That was probably something quite shocking uh, to you. Yes. I was how, very... How was that experiencing it? I mean, I was, I was expecting like, oh, this is going to be cool, you yeah. know, but when you see it, mm -hmm. I think when I was playing, I like, I was like, 
Will. <laughs> I'm like, Will, you're going to freak out, man. Like, I, I couldn't even contain my excitement for it because mm -hmm. I was just so... It was so unexpected. Mm -hmm. and, and I literally had, like, chills watching it. When yeah. you feel it on the controller, you know, yeah. with yeah. the steps or, you know, the cool moments with the music. I mean, when it all comes together, I just, I haven't played a game like that before mm -hmm. where I was, like, really, like, my jaw just dropped, yeah. you know? Yeah. So, I, very... Very amazing first impression yeah, for me. Because yeah. both of you playing it at the same time. Yes. Yeah. See, you going back. <laughs> yeah. How was that for you? I mean, it's awesome. Yeah. Because as I said before, summons were always something that was kind of like sprinkled on there. Yes. As like a garnish. And to the outside world, people would be like, wait, why, are, why is that there? Be, Shut up. It's cool. <laughs> Just yeah. let yeah. it happen. Let it happen. Yeah. <laughs> and now it's a key part of the lore. It's yes. a key part of the story. Yes. It drives a lot of why the world elements are happening. Mm. And it makes sense that these kind of almost biblically powered, you know, uh, um, icons would have this impact in the world. Yes. And I think that creates really cool commentary and it mm -hmm. creates really cool interest in how a world would act if something like a 15-foot Efreet yeah. existed kind of. among us. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. that is so compelling to me because it's an aspect of the game I've loved forever, mm. and seeing it fully realized yeah. is, is so cool. And I think that plays into the mature rating. Yes. Obviously, it's not just there because they wanted to throw blood into a Final Fantasy game. It's there to give the storytellers and the designers and the producers more quivers in their storytelling bow, mm -hmm. where now we can tell an adult story. Yeah. We can have these really cool moments that a fan base that has grown the game, as well as a new fan base, can dig in and be like, this is human. Yeah. Yeah. This is not yeah. a child's toy. Yes. This is life, mm -hmm. played out on a grand scale. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It kind of plays out like a what if, doesn't it? What if yeah. human beings had the ability to transform into these massive weapons of mass destruction? Yep. Yes. Uh, but what would happen if those mass weapons of mass destruction, if you were to take to the field, you could kill hundreds of thousands of people at right. what cost? And so also when you transform, it takes such a huge toll on your body, yep. mm. would you ever do it? And so you have these massive beings but we're really kind of zoning in on the human aspect of it. Yes. And it's kind of a cool question to ask, what would you do with that power? Right, mm. there's that question yeah. of morality. Yes. Here you have this power within you that you can use to decimate hundreds, thousands, who knows, millions of people. Mm. How do you choose how to use that power? I mean, this has evolved so far beyond Final Fantasy III where it's like you see a picture of a, of a monster and then you just see damage appear on the screen. Mm -hmm. Even you know when there was Eidolons or whatever, where they would be on the screen and they would do its own thing. Now you're actually controlling these beasts. Yes. You're contr it's more like yeah. Attack on Titan. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you yeah. have this power awakening within you, and you're using it to protect, to destroy. Who knows? Mm. But there are ramifications, and um, you're going to run into more than just one or two of them. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. how it affects the world around you, I guess that remains to be seen. Yeah, yeah. we'll find out. And. I have to ask, from what you've played and what you've seen from all around us, the icons are everywhere. Which is your favorite, would you say? Oh. <laughs> it's a hard question, I know. I could start us off. Yeah, yeah, you start, you start. I've always liked Odin. Odin is my favorite. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And I'm very excited to see Odin in this game because we haven't seen him yet from what we've played. Odin's a good answer. I like Zantetsukin as like his yes. attack. Yeah. It's yeah. such a cool... <laughs> Whoosh, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, but just seeing yeah. him in the trailers, I was like, I'm yeah, so yeah, yeah. interested yeah. to see how are you going? How is this? How yeah. how are you going to beat that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I it might be a bit of a biased question. No, to ask you no. maybe. I mean, because I think it would be obvious for me to say Ifrit, right? Yeah. But right. I really, I really love Shiva because Shiva. I think Clive's Clive's relationship with Jill in this story is kind of the beating heart of the story. Mm. Yeah. And um, you have fire and ice, and I just, yeah. I adore Susanna's performance as Jill. Mm -hmm. I think she's just absolutely she magical as it. Um, and yeah, I just, I've always loved Shiva. Shiva is an iconic mainstay of the series, but we've really kind of reinvented her. And if you've never seen her before, you know, right up front, we show you Shiva, and we just show you how cool she is. Yes. And like, so Ken's music on this is, Incredible, and his 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 Shiva's theme yes. is haunting and powerful and gorgeous, and I just I can't wait for people to experience Shiva's story. I think yeah. it's absolutely amazing. Yeah. So I don't actually know what icons are in, what icons are out, but I've always been a huge fan of what 
how are they going to treat the next iteration of Bahamut? Like, you know, like Mega Flare is always above and beyond. They always yeah. at, make it, <laughs> yeah, yeah it, it, like s sometimes he'll just do the big beam, sometimes he flies out into space, sometimes he's into like another galaxy, destroying planets, and then finally your own. I'm really curious to see how, how he looks and how powerful he is in this game. If he's in it, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, he's in it. Okay, he's in it. Yeah. 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 We're like looking around. Yeah. 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 He's right in yeah. right somewhere. Yeah. 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 The other side. There you go. But I'd love to know um, who stuck out to you icon-wise like in the beginning. I have to agree. I mean, yep. so beautiful. I mean, yeah. she is just gorgeous. So yeah. my eyes were instantly, even just looking at the artwork before playing, mm -hmm. I was like, Ooh, yeah. I like yes. you. But when you get to play and see, just amazing. But on the other side, Titan for me, uh huh. Yeah. I had chills because I was like, for me, knowing nothing, I was not expecting <laughs> yeah. Titan to be the scale. The scale, the scale of these dolphins. Mm -hmm. Yes. I was like, yeah. Oh, he's going to be big, but like, <laughs> he's going to be big. Beyond, Titan. beyond what I had expected, so yeah. that was yeah. really cool. It was kind of like a tie for me. With yeah, I feel I feel it's so interesting with summons and icons, especially with the fact that these are dominants. These are things that the the characters summon from within themselves, right? And how that is reflective of them as characters is something I'm so intrigued to look at because some people we haven't even met yet, right. and it's yeah. just like to draw from that. That is something that manifests from you, and how do you, how, like, like you said, how do you use that power? Yep. What does that represent? And I think that's just something that is incredibly exciting about 16, and I'm so excited for like new people to come along and feel that excitement from seeing those oh, yeah. larger than life fights, which we'll go on to talk about, by the way, because oh, yeah. we've all had experience with the icon fights. Yes. Which, you know, yep. I think we all had oh, yeah. lots of fun with it. But um, the scale and just seeing it all there for the first time. It's just, I'm so excited yeah. just hearing you say that. So it was, I mean, uh, beyond my expectations. Yeah. yeah. So talking about the icons and how much of a big part they play in the game, you get to play as the icons. That is a huge part of the combat in this game. And the combat in 16 is something that is very new to the series. It's something that we haven't seen before in any of previous installments. and. I would love to know from someone who's never played it to people who may have played similar games to the to the combat. How did it feel for you initially? I was like, I'm not going to be able to. I was I was nervous that I wasn't going to have the skill. Did it feel intimidating to you? Not intimidating. Right. Once I learned that there are tools that, that can help use. me. Yes. The and accessories. Yes. So small things like giving me a second to dodge and telling me what button I can press. Mm -hmm. Because for someone like me who's only been on PC or something like that, mm -hmm. it's so helpful to just have those little tiny things that help me. And once I really got into it, it was less intimidating than I thought it would be yeah. because they do make it friendly for people like me coming in who have no idea, who don't play combat games and things like that. Versus like someone like Will, who's like, get, yeah, I was, get him off of me. I was full me. sweaty. Yes. I turned off anything that would help me. I dialed up the maximum difficulty. Yeah. And I lived by the skin of my teeth, but <laughs> I loved it. And it, and it felt, yeah. it was interesting because it's it's a balancing act, right? Where yes. the the action in this game is breakneck. Mm -hmm. And it's very skill-based and it's and it's it's fast. Mm -hmm. As opposed to the, the, the legacy of like, very methodically planned yes. turn base, yes. but there are, there are elements of that where there are best times to use best abilities, and you do have to kind of create a strategy and a game plan. And as you work through the game plan, you or, you, or the gameplay, you can kind of favor one style or another, which is really cool. Yes, definitely. How did you feel about the combat? Yeah, I mean, uh, um but very similar, actually. Like, mm. you can zip around and just kind of chip away at guys, or you can move right on in and get some big damage going. Big robots fighting big robots kind of thing, except these are living living creatures fighting living creatures. And the skills that they have and the abilities that they have very, very, very much so from, you know, the, the opposing person that you're fighting. So it's very much a different dynamic than fighting man-to-man -man as, like, human versus human or human versus monster. Mm. Um, it opens up a very new exciting dynamic mm. and I think that when you know the full version is released 
not only are you going to be excited to to just try out the the normal combat yeah but when you get those chances to fight as the icon yeah that's like when you roll the sleeves up and you're like okay now let's go yeah because yeah. like a part of the combat is that, that you you are able to become these icons but clive can also use these abilities himself right right so you yes. go, i loved being able to go through using each one so using mm -hmm. phoenix yeah. or garuda yeah, you can cycle through Titan. which is yeah. cool yeah and i loved that you could customize that, yep. you yeah. know, and you can completely customize your play style from mm -hmm, that. Yeah. And it's so enjoyable as you probably, there is icons we are yet to, to find out and see in combat yet. But the fun of just being able to like vary your combat style with yeah. that, as well as what you were saying with the accessories. Yeah. I started off using the accessories. Okay, yes. I got a little brave <laughs> and I took them off at first and I just, uh -huh. nah, it <laughs> yep. But it, it's so fun because you can take them off and challenge yourself as well. You can yeah. like, you know what? The timing is a part of the combat. It's so fun to be able to time that dodge and then switch to a different icon, yeah. you know? But like, I think what the team have really done is thought about quality of life for yes. everyone. So it's yeah. like, if you want to do that, if you want to go hardcore, if you want to customize it, you can do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. There's also a button that you can do it all for you. And so you can just mm -hmm. say, like, auto select, and it will select a loadout for yes. you. Yeah. And then the timely accessories, what you have, is that ability to uh, like have that really cool thing where you press R1 and it dodges for you and they, like you feel amazing yeah. when you yeah. do it. <laughs> but also if you want, you can you can put an accessory in there that dodges automatically for you. Yeah. So you, if you want to just see the story, it'll just automatically dodge. And then you can do one where you just press one button and it cycles through mm -hmm. all of those really cool things. So you are literally looking like a badass. It's really, really simple. You're pressing <laughs> one button. Mm -hmm. You feel really great, and yeah. you get to experience the story without that stress. But if you want to just go hardcore, it's yeah. really, really fun to do as well. And I yeah. think it's that range of things that enables so many people who might be put off by the game to come in immediately and play yeah. it. Yeah, I think the system is so friendly to beginners wanting to come into the series and feel intimidated by it. And I think it's a great game that people will be able to replay because you can vary it so much. It's yeah. It's been so enjoyable to be able to have that hands-on and the cinematic action scenes as well. I feel like that has been so engaging mm -hmm. like through the combat. It doesn't throw off the combat at all. No. It's seamless. I enjoyed when it would go from that into the icon fights. Yes, oh yeah. That was just, it was just, Amazingly epic. <laughs> yeah, and when I say the scale gets big, yes. I like it, get, it gets big. Like you guys big. have played like a little bit of it, right? Mm. But yes. like it just what just surprised me when we were doing this is it just ruined my voice because of the scale of these things. <laughs> we have heard you scream yeah. this game. The amount of primal voice. screams I had to do. <laughs> yeah, uh, what was that line again? <laughs> no, I'm what not going to do it. <laughs> it was some, um, excuse me, a freak, could you possibly come <laughs> to me? Uh, I don't want to bother you, but if you're, if you're not busy. If you're available. That's yeah, I think it was something like that. Yeah. Like, yeah. Just like the game. Yeah, just, wow, yeah. I really am the voice actor. But I would really also like to know a personal Spoiler free battle highlight for you from what you have played and everyone is playing today. Yeah. Like what stood out for you? Like what when was the moment where it kind of clicked for you with the combat? Oh. Would you say you start <laughs> I mean <laughs> this. kind of a sp spoily, but at <laughs> one point during the fight between two icons. <laughs> there you go. One of them removed another one's wing <laughs> and then it came back. <laughs> Yeah, that's what and that was playing. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Am I allowed to say yeah, that? Yeah, like what you were saying is the Garuda fight that everyone's Yeah, when today. Ifrit yes. de-winged her, that yes. was pretty rad. Yeah. 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 Did you get a sense of the scale of these? Because that was your f first experience with the Icon fights. Yeah, I, I, I mean, it, what I said immediately is it reminded me of um, Shadow of the Colossus, mm -hmm. where it felt like the fight was almost a ride. And right, you were going to yeah. see all these different ways because Garuda is obviously a winged creature mm -hmm. and kind of like flying with yes. her and seeing the way that she would attack you and the way that they move through this landscape. And then immediately after the fight, mm. it's kind of this really cool moment to see the landscape again mm. broken, like yeah. post-bomb almost. Mm. There's just rubble everywhere and it, the landscape is torn apart. And that was really, really cool. Yeah, it's interesting that you like describe it in that way. Yeah. Because something that I've heard about this game over and over and over again is that it's a roller coaster. 
Yeah. There is no getting off it. <laughs> no. <laughs> especially when you start, you don't want to put it down. Especially after those icon fights. I, that's and that's what we ended. I was like, I have to put, I have to walk away. From you didn't want to stop. I, I was, <laughs> they're like, well, you can keep playing. I was like, I, I really want to. Like, I just, I couldn't stop. And especially with those, you know, icon battles, the movement is something I've never experienced before in a game, mm -hmm. and it really, between people having wings and and flying and the the way that you know, you move with these icons, mm -hmm. it's like seamless during yeah. these battles and. Yeah. You're still in it and doing yes. damage, but yes. it almost feels like you're in an yeah. experience, that's like floating around, like a roller coaster. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's the advantage of the next gen. Yes. Right? Yes. It's like, oh, yeah. I'm so used to loading into a cutscene, watching the cutscene, now I'm back to playing. Yeah. Yeah. These fights, it's literally like uh, seamless the way that you're like, oh my God, is, am I still fighting this thing or yes. is this a cutscene? Yeah. <laughs> and then it's like press buttons and you're like, yeah. oh God. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah. Cool. And was there a highlight for you with the battle system? Yeah, I mean, personally? like, when you play a new Final Fantasy, you just want to know what you're, there's a curiosity of, like, what, what is going to exist from past games and, yes. and like, what, what kind of um, ideology and stuff, what, what, what is going to exist from previous lore to, like, current games. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's like, you remember, like, the ATB gauge where it's like, okay, slash, take your turn, slash, take your turn, slash, mm -hmm. he disappeared, okay, I win. And like you had mentioned, like the grid of getting his wings torn off or whatever. Um, it's so, there's no one way to fight any one battle. So it yeah. made me wonder, yeah, I beat Grid in my own way. Mm -hmm. But when I play it again, or if I play it again, or if I replay that fight, is it going to change? Mm. And are there better ways to kill certain enemies? And it makes you want to fight and try certain styles using your certain types of... Um, uh, skills and stuff, not not like use a skill and it says, oh, weak point, and then does more damage. Mm. But like, are there going to be moments when I use a certain skill and maybe their legs dissolve or something? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. it really kind of opens up your mind to the possibility yeah. that there's going to be multiple ways to traverse, multiple ways to fight, multiple ways to make a real impact on normal enemies, but larger boss enemies as well. Mm. So I thought that was very cool that it caught it sort of encourages you to be creative in your fights yeah, it, yeah. and to understand what each icon like the power does right with life how yeah. you can use that in combat like phoenix is very ranged you know yep. you had the, the the phoenix shift where you can jump to enemies or uh titan where it's very uh defense based or you want to really pack a punch you can really pack a punch <laughs> yeah it's just being able to use that in it made me want to yeah like you said want to replay and see yeah. how can i use these or if not replay ways? it like i want it to be in the room when my friend plays that battle yes. and i want to see yeah. how exactly. how they go about it yeah yeah yes. Yes. because it is so cinematic right you can watch it again exactly. it's just like watching mm -hmm. a movie you're just like oh yeah. my god i want to watch it yeah. like i was watching you guys play <laughs> i have seen this so many times <laughs> but i was literally watching you play it and i remember there was a moment where i went you're going to want to see the next cutscene yeah. yes. and you just went oh my god because yes. i i just love watching it because it is so watchable as well as playable because mm, yeah. you just you just don't want to stop and like yeah. we open up with this big like bombastic fight right it's 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 Phoenix you're going at it you're already on that roller coaster right mm -hmm. at the beginning and you just don't want to get off it and I just I I love watching people play it because I just think they everyone's done such a good job so now I'm gonna hit you with a little quick fire round so Ooh. I'm gonna ask you like a couple of questions and you just gotta answer them as quickly as you can you ready? No pressure. Yep. Okay. I'm ready. Okay. The first moment that you punched the air, you were excited. You were like, yes, go. The, the first, um, <laughs> the, 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 oh, <laughs> uh, all right. the first icon battle, I was like looking around like, who's watching this with me? I, I'm freaking yeah. out. I, yes. I wanted to like yeah. jump up and down. Mm -hmm. It was unreal. Mm -hmm. What was it for you? For me, I had a little discussion with her prepping her because I was like, oh, here's what you should expect. You, you don't need to know anything. And I was giving her little things. I was like, oh, and there might be a character named Sid. And I knew nothing. And then they introduced Sid. And I was like, you uh, see? You see? And he's so sick. <laughs> they did it. Too. They like, did it. This guy rocks. Yeah. <laughs> um, what was it for you? The first look at Titan. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh for God. me. Yes. I was like, whoa. I think that was a lot of like, The scale, the scope, the detail yes. in the yeah. character model, uh, knowing that this was going to be just one hell of a battle, you know, yeah. just the, the decimation that was, a, that was sure to follow. Um, yeah, I look real forward to it. Because I love the way that they, they use Titan in, in 15. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then this is like Titan from 15 times like 
six. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know what I mean? Maybe maybe more. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that, that's got me pretty excited. Yeah. yeah. Who was it for you, then? Shiva taking the field for the first time. Mm -hmm. I just, I, I remember, I remember playing it and being like, "Let's go!" <laughs> yeah. Like it was, it was, uh, and, and the, the the music that goes alongside it. And she looks so cool, and it's just, it's just mm -hmm. such a punch the air moment. Mine was taking off the accessories and finally nailing <laughs> an ovation. <Yeah. laughs> Love it. Ah. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you so amazing. much. I'm so proud dodge. of myself. Yeah. Oh yeah. My God. <laughs> when that combo <laughs> counter starts oh going out. Yeah. I'm a oh, god. <laughs> yes. I wouldn't know yet, but maybe one day. <laughs> yeah. And probably the complete opposite. What was the first moment that made you emotional or cry? I could start us off. Yeah, please. Puppy toggle. <laughs> it's just I'm just gonna second that. Puppy. Yes. The cute little like the puppy like was like wa oh, um, it was waving to yes. us. It was waving to us. So <laughs> When the puppy waved to me, I felt a little like emotional. Yeah. That's my best yes. friend right there. <laughs> yeah. 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 What was it for you? I mean, mine's a little more existential. That's all right. Uh, Let's just go for it. Let's cover all bases. <laughs> yeah, no, video games were such a huge part of my life when I was a yeah. kid. And I was so able to disappear into them. And I think as I get older and become more and more of a curmudgeon, it's harder yes. to put down my life, to put down what I'm going through, to put down you know, my stresses and just immerse in a video game. And when I was about an hour and a half, into what we were playing, mm. and I realized I was so dialed in. It was kind of this moment I was like, wow, like I, I do have the ability to mm. put myself aside and immerse myself in these super cathartic stories that, you know, kind of saved my life as a kid. Yeah, so. that's lovely. How, what would you say was the most impactful emotional shifting moment for you. So not, not to piggyback on your answer, but it's, it's mm. actually very similar, where it's very tough if you have a bunch of things going on. and. Yeah. It's tough to find yourself losing yourself into a story. Mm -hmm. And I remember this dark and dreary world. And I remember seeing for the first time what appeared to be this world opening up before my very eyes, mm. where you are getting this extreme color palette and you are seeing um, just pieces of beauty, things, things, you know, there's desolate waste that we're looking at in the background right now. Mm. When, the trailer, actually, and this is going back to one of the trailers where it shows you the world that you're going to be existing in. Mm. And you see that you aren't just going to be, you know, down the nitty gritty, down in the catacombs. You're going to be in these gorgeous, you know, wetlands. You're going to be in places where the sun shines. You're going to be in places where there's tons of water, where there's lots of greenery, where you're in the sky. Mm. And it just felt like a world that I wanted to get lost in, that I was hoping to get lost in. And there it was. There was my affirmation, like, yes, they got my back. They yeah. are creating this world for me to get lost in, and I can't wait to, to live in it for a little bit. Yeah. Was there a moment for you that was quite shifting as yeah, Clive? Yeah, it, it was the it was the title screen. Yeah. Like yeah. Uh, yes. Final Fantasy has these iconic title screens, right? And yeah. I and I've been ma we've been making this game for so long, and as a fan. You know, I, I kind of knew what was going to happen, so that I didn't really think I was going to be surprised by it. Mm. And then the fact that it became real, the moment that it became a game, <laughs> um, <laughs> I saw the title screen and I heard the music, and I went, "Oh, this is something that I'm a part of." And um, mm. I, I, it was, it was, I didn't expect it. Um, and then the next time was the victory fanfare after you beat something and you slay yeah. it, and you hear the choir go, and it's this very famous. You know, fanfare. Da, 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 right? Yeah. But they've reimagined it. And so. I feel like I've heard that somewhere before. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't know how we just yeah. only that. But if you've never <laughs> played it right, it's a whole new version. It feels really cool. It's yeah. the first time you're going to hear it. And mm -hmm. Soken has created this, this, this new fanfare for a new generation. Like, yeah. And it, I was just really exciting. And that is really exciting. What would you say is the coolest combo you pulled off? So. Oh, when yeah. you're fighting, <laughs> you know, going from Phoenix to Garuda to Titan, like, what was your favorite? Easy. Garuda, yep. air, yes. Titan, punch. punch. Yeah. <laughs> that is wild. So good. I, yeah. I, 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 sorry. You oh, no, no, no. I'm just, I'm just singing. It's, it's, yeah. it's so, yeah. It's it's the, the Phoenix uppercut into Garuda, ba 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 and then charging up the Titan punch and getting that sweet yeah. spot. Boom. Yeah. yeah. Small little thing too yeah. to find out that you can ignite your sword. Yeah. Oh, it's so cool. cool. I was you like, oh, okay. That. So I'm gonna ignite it every <laughs> yeah. time. You, you That's hold it. I'm not, how up. did I not know this? You hold yeah, square. Yeah, I just gotta hold it. it. <laughs> I didn't. I've, I've stumbled upon it by fluke. You can also charge up your shot too. From yeah. <laughs> It's really cool. I, I have to play it again. There yeah. you go. Yeah. Really cool. But right, there's so many things to discover. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Cool. I just to kind of get it in. Good boy toggle. 
Um, <laughs> coolest combo is you get com you get you get Toggle to kick him up in the air. You yeah. keep him suspended up in the oh, air yeah. with your spell. Oh. You go with your attack. You're juggling. Yeah. It's just so <laughs> fun. That sounds so cool. And just to wrap up the quick fire round, not really quick fire, but you know. I just want to know your closing thoughts and what you would say to people wanting to start yeah. with Final Fantasy 16 as their first entry into the franchise. And I think it'd be great to start with you yeah. as someone who yeah. will be coming to the franchise. Like, yeah. What would I, you want to say? I I really am like at this point like begging people, please give it a try. Mm -hmm. I, I really didn't go into it thinking I'm I'm going to love this. I knew nothing about it. I'm like, we're on 16, I'm gonna be so lost. It truly feels like a brand new game that I just jumped into and everyone jumped in at the same time with me. Mm. And it just, I'm already so passionate about it and I've barely played it. So I really, I just hope that everyone gives it a chance because it is such a beautiful game, a beautiful story. The music, the voice acting, the graphics, everything is just so beautiful. So mm -hmm. yep. please give it a chance, please. <laughs> uh, for me, it's it's funny because you can immediately identify Final Fantasy fans. You know, mm -hmm. there's there's like a common language there. And a lot of my best friends and my girlfriend have never entered this world. Mm -hmm. And it might be a turn-based size hurdle yes. that <laughs> they couldn't get over. Mm -hmm. So I'm really excited to give this game to my girlfriend and to my one friend, Hassan, and be like, listen, this is the gateway drug. Mm -hmm. Welcome, mm -hmm. welcome. Mm -hmm. And I think that's gonna be a lot of people's <laughs> experience. And ultimately, I'm so far ahead of the curve, I realize that I'm gonna be a Final Fantasy hipster, where I'm like, <laughs> oh yeah, I was into the series way before six. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was playing seven, so you know. <laughs> if you like the movie, you really like the book. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I, I, I hope that this does function as a gateway drug uh, mm -hmm. for a lot of people to get into the world because it is something that when you become a fan of it, it's like a common language. Mm -hmm. And uh, I hope a lot of those people who find 16 then backtrack mm -hmm. and experience a lot of those other stories. Yeah, yeah. And what would you say to people wanting to start I'm not 16? sure if this is like the best selling point, but I mean, we, we like to consume everything in one shot. We like to binge everything. Mm. And um, lately, you know, there's been a kick on, on fantasy inspired series. So like we're talking Game of Thrones type of things, mm -hmm. Dungeons and Dragons, all mm -hmm. that sort of stuff. You know, I, I'm gonna say like, you know, the Harry Potters and all that. Like everyone loves fantasy right now. And if you want your own fantasy tale, one that takes a mature approach to it, one where it opens up this enormous, ever, ever, it, ever the increasingly enormous world where you're gonna meet new friends, Meet your family, develop as a human being, grow. Join that growth period from boy to man to whatever follows afterwards. Have these incredible powers that probably you couldn't, you couldn't do as a series on television unless you had a bajillion dollar budget. <laughs> these guys are making that a reality mm -hmm. and you're in the driver's seat. Yeah. So take, take whatever your favorite fantasy book, mm -hmm. novel, encyclopedia, <laughs> television show, movie, put it into a game where you're actually the one behind the driver's seat, and that's pretty much the game right now. Mm -hmm. And if you haven't played any Final Fantasy that came before this, that's fine. This is its own thing. Mm -hmm. It's in a self-contained universe. You don't have to know anything. Start with this one, and I haven't played it, but it's pretty safe to say that with a couple hours that I have played, four, five or so, that you're not going to regret it, and you're mm -hmm. going to enjoy it, and it'll go down as something that maybe one of your greatest video game experiences you've ever had. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And this is something you've been working on for so yeah. long. Yeah. What would you say to people who are gonna, this is their first Final this Fantasy? This is their first Final Fantasy. Well, yeah. I, I think we're all kind of like on the same wavelength of this, right? Mm. Like it feels something special, it feels something new. And I think that like for me, this is, uh, they've said it before, this is a TV show, this is the biggest budget TV show you've ever seen mm -hmm. and you can play it. Yeah. yeah, I think Yoshi P said it's like four seasons of a TV show <laughs> and you get to have like full access to it. You can play it any way you want. So just mm. jump on board because the story is incredible and the characters, the performances, like we have like actors from film and TV who've come in and just given their all. They've just laid mm. it all out for you guys. So just, 
enjoy it. Like, yeah. come on in, play the, play, play the demo, see if you like it. There's a mm -hmm. demo, there's a mm -hmm. two hour demo. If you don't like it, you don't have to play the rest of it. Right. And if and you do, save your save. Yeah. Yes. And, take yeah. It and then it carries yes. over. Right. And that's the best thing. It's like, it's two hours and you played two hours and oh you were like, God. I want to play more. So like, yeah. jump in, play the demo, it's free. You're gonna have a great time. Yeah, whatever it is that you're looking for, whether it's a story, whether it's, whether it's the, the graphics, whether it's the visuals, whether it's the performances, these guys gave their heart and their soul through how many lines? Is it 100,000? 100, 100, yeah, 100,000 plus lines? Oh. These guys put it on the line to really give you a piece of their heart and their soul to tell what they believe is one of the greatest fantasy stories of all time. And it's coming to you really soon, and it's available for everyone really, really soon. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I would say to people wanting to pick this up for the first time as their first Final Fantasy, you really do remember your first Final Fantasy. Yeah. And the stories that this series is capable of telling and the things that you take away from it truly do stay with you. They really do. And I'm so excited that new people will be able to come into the series and see what it's capable of doing. These yeah. emotional beats that it's able to hit and hopefully resonate with you. Yep. It's something I think is truly special and truly Final Fantasy. I mean, I'm yep. looking at Torgo in the background here. I used yeah. to have an Alaskan Malamute and oh. to see him grow from a puppy to a dog, it just, it just mm -hmm. brings back those yeah. feelings too because yeah. They are, they are telling this story in a very human way, mm. and I think that they're going to make you feel things as a human, not as someone who's just casually playing a game to play a game, which I guess you could do too, but <laughs> I'm going to be playing this to feel something. Yeah. Yes. And um, yep. yes. I feel like I'm going to be feeling something for hours and hours and hours and hours, and knowing me, hundreds of hours. So <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. And that brings us to the end of our roundtable discussion. I just want to thank you all so much for joining me and talking about the game and being so passionate about it. It's been absolutely amazing. The game is out now, and you can download the demo. Thank you for watching, and goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye, good night. Bye. <laughs>